Hi, Bug. That's Olivia the Chihuahua. She has many nicknames, including Newton, Bug, Noodle. Um, as you can see, she's a little, little chunkier. Oh, she jumped for the camera. Come on. Come on, Bug. Come on. She has this really funny ear thing, too. One ear straight and one ear isn't. So, um, yeah. This is what she does. This is Riley, uh, also known as Pooh. Um, these two were my original dogs. And then uh, there's a husky out front. It is my partner's dog. His name's Coda. Um, okay, so back to me. Um, I wanted to make a, a video kind of talking about um, this process, this place that I'm in, and um, being like essentially a month away from the beginning of, of the, the medical transition, feel an immense amount of pressure, and um, there's a lot of expectations that I have that I've put on myself and expectations that others have put on me. Um, the, the ignorant um, statements, the unintentional ignorant statements of people of you know, you're becoming a man and, and the notion that all of a sudden I'm going to become this like aggressive asshole um, or that, the, that people feel like they have the right to negotiate my body. Like, you know, am I going to have a beard? Am I not? And that wouldn't work for me and so on and so forth. And, and it's this weird space and um, at times I have a really hard time navigating it. Um, earlier this week on Monday, I had to go to my board meeting for my the agency I work for a nonprofit, and it was an agenda item. Um, and I've never been an agenda item, and it just said Aiden. Um, and I and I came out to the board and and basically did that um, for two reasons: to let them know what was coming up. Um, I think that's a respectful thing, as opposed to not talking about it. And then it becomes this gigantic elephant in the room, and it's weird, and I don't really do that. <clears throat> um, but the second piece is. Um, because of the population that I work with, I work with at-risk kids, and um, I um, I have staff that facilitate programs in schools, school-based programs, and um, the curriculum that we use is um, it's meant to, to, to create change, and, and change only comes from um, examination, and examination generally leads to some, some sort of discomfort. So we're working with these teenagers that... Um, are already in continuation school, so they have drug addiction issues and, and abuse that they have been, um, they've been perpetrated against, and many of them are perpetrators as well. So the point of all this is that I'm in my job, I, I speak with principals and counselors and teachers and directors of juvenile hall, because we work in juvenile hall and juvenile hall staff and probation and judges and lawyers and all that kind of stuff. And so wanting to um, address Transitioning at work, you know, is also, um, it's not just affecting my, my direct staff. Um, and my direct staff have been really, really great. Um, and my, my supervisor um, has been great. So um, I came out to the board basically saying I need to know if I have your support or not. Um, because if shit hits the fan and we have people who want to pull our contracts, um, I need to know that you guys are going to support me. Um, so... My point with all of that is that um, just in this process of, you know, the next month going to be transitioning, medically transitioning soon, I feel an immense amount of pressure and I feel like I'm at a pressure cooker. And when I first started um, openly talking about my gender and gender identity, um, it was like relieving a little bit of that pressure and, and now it's like the pressure is back. And um, so I, I don't know, I guess I'm just kind of venting or venting to a camera, which is, which is a weird thing. Um, my partner just ran to work, and, and so I'm also conscious of her coming home because it's weird to be talking to a camera. Um, so I don't know. How, if you guys have similar experience, do you know what I'm talking about? Like that month before you start testosterone and a couple of months before surgery and, and coming out and doing all this stuff. Is there a lot of pressure and, and you know, kind of defending who you are in the sense that you're not becoming somebody different you know, I already am who I am. Um, I'm just going to let you know who I am now, which is a different sort of, of thing. And, and there's grief, there's sadness, and there's grief about the loss of this life that I've lived for 31 years. And although um, it wasn't authentic and it does wasn't working for me, it's what, I, it's what I had, and I did the best that I could with it. And I was an athlete, and, and I was an activist, and I was all these things. And 
um, I can still be those things, but I'll be those things in a different sort of a way. So there's kind of a grieving process for me about um, the loss of, you know, this part of my life. And my therapist summed it up really, really well in the sense that when someone has a child, they're really, really excited about the baby. But they're also there's also a grieving process of that single life, like being able to do what you want when you want, because when you have a child, in theory, you shouldn't do that and you don't do that. And so you're celebrating this really great thing, but you're also mourning the loss of something else. And, and I thought that was a good analogy because that's what I feel like. I feel like there's this awesome thing coming around the corner. I'm really super stoked about it. Um, and I really want to celebrate it, but then there's also this kind of the sadness of this loss um, and grieving and reforming an identity and, and realizing that I don't know my own, I don't know what I have the right to um, say no to or when people ask questions. You know, right off the bat, people ask about my genitals, and I, I find that so strange. Like, I don't ask you about your genitals. Like, why are you talking to me about this stuff? Um, and I know that it comes from a good place, and it's benign, but, man, it just is, it's, it's, I don't know. I guess I get tired of it. I get really tired of it. So just venting. Appreciate it. Um, I'd show you a cute picture of my dogs again, but they're already asleep. So, um, okay, thanks.